How would you feel if I told you that you would go to Mars? And not just a short visit either, a permanent stay. Scared? Excited? Well, I can tell you with confidence that some of you in the audience will go to Mars one day. So that begs the question, how exactly will we get to Mars? Well, this is where the Mars plan comes into place. Essentially, the Mars plan is a way to help give humanity a bigger presence. I mean, think about it. It is one thing to have been to space and to have landed on the moon, but to have inhabited another world and to call it your own? Now that would be one of the biggest achievements humanity would ever accomplish. It could even be akin to the first animals that stepped out onto land. And I know that it sounds like some kid who's fantasizing about space or whatever, but it really isn't. There are genuine plans to get to Mars. Speaking of which, Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla, has had a life goal that is getting humanity to Mars, and he's been doing everything in his power to get us there, including testing his prototype for the Starship, the ship that will be getting us there. I'll be focusing on SpaceX's plans, as they're the most detailed, the most imminent, and the most likely to happen. Essentially, to get one spacecraft into Mars, you'll have to start out with the heavy booster in the Starship on the pad. At liftoff, 27 full-flow combustion engines on the heavy booster will ignite, and it will lift off. When almost all of the fuel is depleted from the heavy booster, it decouples from the Starship and relands itself back at the pad. Meanwhile, the Starship gets itself into a stable parking orbit around Earth. Then, the heavy booster refuels itself, and a fuel tanker is put on top of the heavy booster. The heavy booster again lifts off with the fuel tanker, and the fuel tanker gets into orbit while the heavy booster relands itself again. In orbit, the fuel tanker and the Starship dock, and almost all of the fuel is transferred from the fuel tanker to the Starship. Then, the fuel tanker decouples from the Starship and lands itself back on Earth, while the Starship starts the Mars injection burn. The first manned mission is scheduled for 2024. And while our astronauts are on Mars, they're going to have to find out a way to live. In order for them to get food, 20% will be grown on Mars through hydroponics, and 80% will be imported from Earth, thank freeze-dried food. For water, they will most likely use the WAVAR, a machine produced by NASA, which takes the 100% human Martian atmosphere and converts it into water. The first bases will probably be underground, because this solves the radiation exposure. Since Mars has no magnetosphere, all the lethal radiation coming from the sun will hit Mars, and since we're on the ground, the, the ground will stop the cosmic rays. However, in the future, if this radiation problem is solved, people might live in pressurized domes or giant glass habitation domes. For oxygen, we'll probably use a NASA-made machine, the MOXIE, which converts the 96% carbon dioxide atmosphere of Mars into oxygen. Radiation exposure is a big problem for living on Mars. As I previously stated, we'll probably be living underground, but that's not a long-term solution. So, we can put a giant magnet into a geostationary orbit, meaning that its orbital period is the same as Mars' rotation period, which means that it'll stay above the base at all time and deflect all cosmic rays. Solar panels will probably not be a viable source of energy, as Mars is so distant from the sun, and dust storms frequently cover its surface. So, we'll probably be using radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs, to power our bases. What RTGs do is produce energy through the heat of a decaying element. While it sounds like these missions will be a piece of cake, it really won't be. The first few people who get each base started will be faced with terrible conditions, high amounts of stress, and immense chance of death. But if it works out, then Mars could be compared to Earth as the Americas are compared to Europe. We've always explored. We spread out from Africa, we discovered new continents, and we landed on the moon. I have no doubt that we will get to Mars someday. And I'm really excited about it, to be living in this moment in time where we started the colonization of Mars. And I hope you are too. Thank you.